thank you everyone for joining today. This is all about a session for you know, social media for consultants and why the six M's are important. We're going to address one thing fairly quickly when people always ask certain things about this. The immediate one is yes, copy of the slides will be available on request. Another is that session is being recorded uh, and I might actually choose to use some pieces of this for social media in its own right. Please do use the chat facility to post questions, that kind of thing. And I'll welcome, I'll try and keep, keep this uh, towards the end. We'll have some time for some questions and answers as well. So I, I posted this recently, where it said about, you know, what, why are six M's important for consultants? So I suppose the obvious thing, if, if you've all registered, really, is what are the six M's? And so what I'll do is right at the end of this, I'm going to give you some details on how to get things like copy the recording uh, and the slides and that kind of thing. But let's address what, what the six M's actually are, because that, that was just a hook line in a way to get people to get, get interested. The first M is the me. And actually by that, I don't mean me, I mean you. In that when, you, when you're doing social media activities, you're doing posts and this kind of thing, you really need to think about who you are that is presenting this stuff. So what, what, what's the brand proposition and why you're doing it and what you're looking to aim from it. And so you need to first of all establish who you are and what, what you are. Because that then really ties in nicely with the second thing which is the motivation behind actually uh, doing social media. What, what, why do you want to do this? I'm going to go into that in a little bit more detail later on because you, that's really, really critical that you need to know why you're posting on social media before you start posting on social media. It's really critical. And for a lot of people, uh, particularly for consultants, it's going to be monetization. And it's going to be about how you actually use your social media presence to actually generate revenue in, in some way. And we'll go into some of those areas as well. The fourth M is around the metric. So what do you measure and how do you measure it? And how do you actually calculate these numbers? Where do the numbers come from? What do the numbers actually mean? Fifth M is where do you do your social media activities? So I'm gonna be talking mainly about LinkedIn today. But a lot of what I talk about actually applies to all the platforms as well. And we're going to dig into a little bit more detail as to just how big the opportunities are across many, many of these platforms. And then the final M out of the six is managing. Where, when do you do it? Because it can be quite a time-consuming activity. And I'm going to talk about some of the techniques I use to actually have quite an active, lively social media presence without too much effort. So without having to take too much time to do it. So that, that, that's the six M's that we're gonna be covering today. So remember that the me, the motivation, the monetization, the metrics, the market and the managing. But there's more reason to stick around is that at the end, I will also share some of the magic of, of what I've learned, particularly around LinkedIn, of some of the techniques and uh, tricks that you can use to better boost your posts and promote them and so on. So that's a good reason to stick around. Getting you to stick around is in itself a social media trick. And we'll talk about stickiness a little bit later on as well. And then at the end of it, we'll do the wrap up, um, an opportunity for Q&A uh, and um, see if we've got anything that I can answer that we, we haven't covered previously. So the me, who, who will this interest? And when we look at social media pro, uh, platforms these days, loads and loads of them, you know, we've all heard of, you know, LinkedIn, Twitter, uh, this kind of stuff. But what you may not realize is that actually that they are in themselves brands who, that are becoming more and more f familiar as well. And so YouTube, which is a major, major brand these days, is one of all, so the, the brands which is growing most in its awareness, because everyone uses YouTube now to find out how to do things, but how to learn things as well. And then we've got things like LinkedIn. This is from last year, and this was about the fastest growing brands. LinkedIn as a brand is, is growing quite rapidly. And so that's why it's really important um, to like, use the, these capabilities and take advantage of that. But ultimately, you know, the, the, the me or the you, the, this is aimed at individuals who use social media or who are looking to use it. Because you're looking to generate revenue, you're looking to generate business or awareness. 
And so this session, I'm going to be showing you how to use your time effectively and efficiently. And it is specifically about posts and articles and activities. This isn't a how to build your LinkedIn profile. It really is about the posting activity. And it's not about search engine optimization, although that's very important as well, um, or general prospecting. So hopefully that, that kind of resonates with who you are for, for being on this call today. Now, looking at the, the way that consultants develop a business, it's no different to any other organization. You use what's called a marketing funnel. And this is where initially uh, you do some sort of outreach, advertising, promotion, or whatever, in order to build your awareness. Now, some people might do that purely through their network. You know, if you've worked in the insurance industry in the Lloyd's market, everyone knows everybody. But for those who don't necessarily operate in that niche, there is sometimes a need to, first of all, build up your aware uh, people's awareness of you before you start doing lead generation, so actually um, contacting people. And part of that as well is building up the awareness, showing the interest, uh, and actually making it a personal thing so that people start engaging with you. And this is where social media really fits nicely right the way down this marketing funnel, you know, through doing things like marketing campaigns and events and advertising, this kind of thing, but right the way down to the, the point of or ultimate sale where some people are actually using uh, LinkedIn to promote the services they offer. So and I, I know there are a few people, particularly in the data governance space, who use LinkedIn to promote the courses they run, the um, webinars they run, that kind of thing. So the, the whole thing about social media is it can be used for the initial pipeline of building overall awareness, but then actually drill down and end up generating sales as well. Now, for me, a quick bit of background and uh, what's this, the social evidence or whatever, social proof that I know what I'm talking about a little bit. Um, I started using LinkedIn in 2004 for probably the same reason as everyone else was using it. It was a way of networking for potential job prospects in the future. And then my, my use of it's kind of evolved as I became an independent consultant. So I've been on this LinkedIn platform for just short of 20 years, uh, which means I've got a reasonable amount of experience using it. I, I went on to Twitter in 2007 which I found was really useful for finding out things and then realized I could actually use that to build, do a bit of brand building as well. Then also in 2007, Facebook came about, started using that uh, for the same reason that most people do. Um, I, I used it to keep in contact with people who I had no desire to keep in contact, but um, you, you end up connecting to you know, long lost neighbors and relatives and friends and everything. But, the Facebook demographic has changed rapidly over the last few years as Facebook has been working out on its how it monetizes its platform. And so Facebook for business is a very big area now, and they are uh, really developing that space. Then I mentioned YouTube earlier on. I joined YouTube 2011 um, just for a bit of fun, really. I've got a very small number of followers. I'm not exactly a Mr. Beast with millions of followers, but I, I, I do use it. And then Instagram, join that, see what that was about. And then TikTok. And TikTok is this thing that, you know, um, US government's really worried that it's a spying tool, which it, it may be in amongst every other uh, social media platform going. But I joined TikTok about six months ago, and I found the uh, adoption rate on it very high. So I've already got over 1,100 followers. Um, and with all of these things as well, th this growth in followers and connections, this kind of thing, has been achieved purely from organic growth. So I don't pay for the professional. I don't pay for Facebook business. I don't pay for LinkedIn. can't even remember what their nail, um, the names of their offerings are now. But th this is all organic, unpaid, with the one exception that YouTube, I did a little bit dabbling. I did some paid um, pr promotion on it just in the experiments. I think it cost me about 20 pounds or something to promote a few videos I was doing. So as, as you can see, I've got a reasonable lot of experience in using social media and, and being on the platform, certainly. But it's not all about LinkedIn. Um, there are th these platforms, as I say, that I use as well. 
Now, I'll give you a quick example of TikTok for a moment. And I'm hoping that this will come up in a minute. What's going on in Lloyds of London today? If you love people watching, it's a great place to be. Underwriters and brokers going about their business, you'll spot the brokers as the ones often carrying the paperwork well, fact, and also not, the ones sat working. on the... So I was, I was hoping that was going to play um, the, the, the TikTok live, but it isn't. But it's actually about Lloyds of London. And it's been done by someone who just um, is trying to promote the commercial insurance market. And they're actually using TikTok. But check that out on the, the link on the... Um, slide. Now, in terms of where I'm going to be talking about things, where I say it's not all about LinkedIn, I will be focusing a lot on, on LinkedIn. But the principles across all the platforms are actually pretty similar in that ultimately um, their algorithms are designed around keeping you on the platform. So um, what applies with LinkedIn applies in some respect to TikTok, to YouTube and, and everything like that. And also at the end of this session, I'm including a, a load of useful links and resources. So do, do stick around till the end for that as well. So that was the me, so, so the, the you in effect of, you know, why, why do you want to do this um, as an individual? But now we've got the real motivation thing that, and this is what I describe as absolutely, you know, the most important thing. Uh, this is the most important to M because you need to get this really, really clear about why you're using social media, why you're posting, why you're contributing in order for you to work out your return on investment of your time, effort, and if you're paying for paid services, whether that's worthwhile. So for me, ultimately, it's about using social media as a channel for direct and indirect revenue generation. And I achieve that through a number of ways, which we'll go into shortly. But for you, it might be something different. So we take a look at, typically, there's about four main reasons that people tend to use um, social media in some way. Uh, the first is to build brand as an expert. And so for me, you know, I've got on my LinkedIn profile, clearly a, a whole professional side of things around being competent, capable, presenting, um, shows I, I've, I've I know what I'm talking about. So it helps me to build that, that uh, brand recognition. You can also achieve that through appearing in people's news feeds. So whereas the first one was about um, your actual profile, and we're not going to go into opt optimizing your profile now, one of the things is about posting so that you actually appear in other people's news feeds. And that can make you memorable. Um, I get people coming up to me to say, oh, I keep seeing you coming up on LinkedIn. And it's not because they're searching for me. It's simply I keep appearing in the news feeds. So it means they've got an awareness that I exist and, and what it is that I do. Um, another area may be uh, generally about sharing value in, in some way and just sharing use, useful stuff, ultimately. So I um, post some things occasionally. I do other YouTube guides on things like running Zoom meetings, um, how to use LinkedIn for social media uh, and that, that kind of thing. So it, it's a way of providing value. And then a, another thing is that you can use it for prospecting. You can actually use the posts that you make to actually generate comments from other people. And that's why you'll quite often see on, on my posts, I'll say things like, um, you know, well, what I do is let me know how I can help you. It will get in touch if you want more information. So it, it, it's actually using it as kind of a call to action in some way by using posts to actually generate comments. And then finally, the, the other um, area that people sometimes do social media is because they were told they needed to do it and they actually don't know what they're doing, why they're doing it. And that's why you'll sometimes hear them saying things like, oh, well, you know, is it worth me while, is it worth my while paying for a subscription on something or whatever without first thinking about why they're going to be doing it? So that this is where it comes back, as I say, motivation, what, why are you doing uh, social media activity is probably the most important thing to figure out before you're looking at how much you're going to spend on it in terms of time and effort. Now, for me, the, the end result of this, uh, LinkedIn have got a thing so, called your social selling index, which takes a look at your profile, takes a look at the activities, how much you post, how much you comment, this kind of thing. And that they give you a ranking. 
So my ranking on my social selling index is 71 out of 100, which in an, as a number is meaningless in its own right. However, when you compare it to other people in my industry, which is the business consulting space, uh, most people in the industry have got a ranking of 37. So my, my ranking is nearly double what most others and actually puts me in the top 1% of business consultants and how I engage and get involved in activity. And we can see the way that LinkedIn break this score down. You can see I've got a very high 25 out of 25 for building relationships online and then fostering them offline is something that um, LinkedIn doesn't know about, but it is usually something that develops. So SSI, if you haven't done it and use LinkedIn, I can recommend that you try it. It is free and there's a link at the the bottom of this uh, slide on how you can actually access that for free. So it's really useful because it gives you a feeling about where you are currently, and then you can start engaging more activities and actually see if your ranking increases. So that takes us from the why, which for a lot of people, it's about generating revenue. So monetization is the third M, which is how you can actually generate revenue in, in some way. And Typically with social media platforms, what you're doing is that you're either using it for lead generation. So you're, you're putting stuff out there in the hope that people will get in touch with you. Um, or you'll use it for list building. So you get people who'll run a session like, like, like this event, in fact, and they'll have a registration page, which that allows you to capture their email address and then you can contact them afterwards. So it's quite a useful thing from there because then you can start using that for prospecting for business in future. You know, and the, the whole, hey, you saw you came along to my webinar last week. What did you think? How can I help you? Blah, 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 blah. It is a really useful thing. The other thing is that um, a social media posting activity can just grow your network. Because if you say things that other people find interesting, then they're more likely to either follow or connect with you. And bear in mind on LinkedIn, there is a difference between followers and connections in that followers get to see what you're saying and doing, but you don't get to see what they're saying and doing, whereas connections do. So I always find it better to connect with people and to follow them um, because it just grows your network in some ways uh, as well. And then the other thing is it's all about building your profile. I was saying earlier on about you know, credibility, thought leadership. Uh, and having a, a brand, an identity, and a presence. And that's where it comes back to what's typically get given the buzz phrase, inbound marketing, which is something I, I didn't know I did for, for several years until someone said to me, oh, you, how, how's your inbound marketing going? I, inbound marketing simply means that people approach you because they've seen who you are, they've seen what you're saying, what you're doing, and that kind of thing. And I, I kind of call, call it form of stalking, really. But I've had companies approach me saying, oh, we saw you what, what you wrote on LinkedIn. You clearly have an understanding of the pain point we have. We'd love to talk with you, which is way, way better than you writing emails out to people to say, hi, I'm Gary. I work in emerging technology. How can I help you? When actually the prospect contacts you because you, you've already got the engagement going. So that's one of the things I find with um, social media that because it's building your brand, your profile, it actually results in people contacting you as opposed to you having to contact people. And then th there are other forms of monetization as well. You can actually get the platforms to pay you, you know, whether that's through affiliation schemes or influencers, particularly on the likes of Instagram, um, or advertising revenue share, which is not too bad with YouTube, for example. And there are other platform incentives. So TikTok give you... Um, kind of like TikTok rewards and this kind of thing that you can use to, to build your profile and that kind of thing. We're not going to cover any of that for this session, though. This is mainly about actually using the platform and generating from the platform, helping your network and, and growing your business. So that takes us on nicely. If you're looking to grow what you're doing and, and develop things, you really want some metrics. You want the ability to measure how effective what you're doing actually is. And what you quickly learn is a whole range of metrics available. Um, and I, I find 
people get a little confused at times that there's two metrics. One is a thing called impressions. So an impression is whenever you appear in somebody else's news feed. So example here, um, it's got a post that appeared in my news feed from Jason. So this whole thing, if that appears in my new news feed, LinkedIn count that as an impression. Doesn't mean I've read it, doesn't mean I've looked at it, just means it was served up to me. So, so that's impressions. And if you take a look at most companies um, where they advertise, you know, the professional versions or whatever, they'll talk about increasing the number of impressions. All that means is that it's more likely that your posts will be served up. It doesn't mean it's more likely that someone's going to read it or, or action on it. So that, that's impressions if, if it simply appears in a news feed. Then we have the number of views. So this is where someone has actually taken the time to read something. And this is where it can be really useful to actually write something that is more than a couple of sentences long because it means people have to click on the see more bit. And if you click on the see more, then that's in a, a way of the platform kind of figuring out that you're actually looking at this as opposed to it just appearing in your feed. So remember then that impressions are how many times something is served up to somebody else. Views is how many times they've probably looked at it or how many people have looked at it. And then also we have engagements. And engagements are where people actually make comments, they repost it, they share it, they like it. Um, and they're called engagements. So that's where you're actively engaging with somebody. And we'll see the importance of engagements a little bit later as well and the impact that that can have. And then finally, we, we've got connections and followers, which is the, the area that we're not going to cover on this. Some of the more de um, interesting metrics, which, which I call de derived metrics, are things like click-through rate. So click-through rate is how many impressions, so how many times did your post get served up, divided by how many times was it actually viewed. Actually, sorry, I've got that calculation the wrong way around. It's views divided by impressions. So the, the click-through rate is you know, how many people of those who were served your, your um, post actually read it or, or actually used, saw it in some way. So I, I must remember to change that calculation. It's actually views divided by impressions. Then we've got a thing called dwell time and view time. Uh, and these are really interesting that social media platforms have got no sure way of knowing how good the quality of the content you're producing is. So they use dwell time as a proxy for how good your, your article is or how good your post is. And dwell time, there's, there's actually two types of dwell time. There's what's called feed dwell and click dwell. And this is, in essence, how long have people spent looking or reading your article or post? So feed dwell is when the, the post appears in, in um, the news feed, and at least part of it can be, be seen. So if you leave it on your screen for a few seconds, that kind of counts. Click dwell is if somebody actually clicks on the see more, how long did they actually stay reading it? So this is why it can be quite useful to write articles that are both engaging um, and interesting and lengthy because obviously the longer something is, the more time people spend reading it, and therefore that impacts um, the, the dwell and the view times and everything. And it, it used to be that LinkedIn in particular used to use that quite a lot as a way of figuring out whether it was worth them promoting your post uh, because it was likely to be a post of high quality with high engagement and therefore would keep people on the platform for longer. And then there's a thing called engagement rate, which is you take, uh, and again, it, it's calculations the other way around on this. It's actually, it's the number of engagements. So how many times people have uh, liked, commented, shared, reshared, whatever, divided by the number of views that, that the post actually receives. So it's not the number of impressions, it's the number of views. And that gives you an engagement rate. So if you can get an engagement rate of, on YouTube, 
Um, doesn't matter too much. Uh, they tend to use click-through rate. And YouTube, if you get a click-through rate of above 2.5%, so that means where your um, video is served up in someone's feed and people like to click on it, you get above 2.5%, that's usually considered okay. With engagement rate, it really depends because it might be you've written an article which is fascinating, but is informational, but you've written it in a way that it doesn't seek comments and feedback and that kind of thing. So this is where it's really useful to get people to actually click on the like um, after they've actually read it, because that improves the engagement rate. Ultimately, um, all of these platforms, they're very, very similar in um, but the metrics that they use. They might use slightly different words. Uh, you know, LinkedIn uses reactions, comments, and reposts, whereas TikTok uses likes, comments, and shares. YouTube likes, comments, and, and click rate, and so on. So they're all broadly the same. That, that's quite useful because it means that um, your understanding of what one phrase means, if we talk about impressions, for example, that's consistent across all of the platforms. But what is dif different between each of the platforms is the analytics that they provide. And this can be really, really useful. So this is uh, LinkedIn's analytics that allow you to look at uh, how many impressions there are. Impressions for me, tend to be directly related to how often I'm posting. So if I post on more, so on that, um, when I did this extract, I hadn't been doing much posting and my uh, impressions were down two thirds. I, I checked this morning and because I've been a bit more active the last week or so, my impressions are actually up, I think it's 50% on the previous week kind of thing. So LinkedIn provides some really useful metrics that allow you to look at how effective your posts are one of the great things as well is it also shows you uh, a breakdown of your demographics. It does it in a couple of ways, but one of the ones I find useful is job titles. So you can figure out on a particular post what type of people are reading your, your post. Because it might be you've written an article that you're aiming at like chief financial officers and you get a really high level of uh, views and you think, oh, wow, this is brilliant. But then you find that the job title is like secretary or assistant or something, which means that you're actually hitting the wrong people. So LinkedIn, quite useful. That. And also it gives overall trends of, you know, your follower growth and your, your content performance and so on. TikTok, in comparison, does similar things. Again, it shows the number of views. Um, and what I find fascinating with TikTok is how when you look at follower activity, this gives you a really good indication of when most of your followers are actually online and actually watching or re, uh, watching your videos in some way. And in the, with TikTok, it seems quite consistent that it's particular times of day where they peak. So if you're thinking about when to post something, and we'll talk a little bit more about that with LinkedIn later on, uh, it can be quite useful to know when your people are online. Um, slight difference with TikTok in terms of showing the audience that um, are watching things, it breaks things down by location, but it only does it down to country level. So, you know, it's telling me 40% of my viewers are from the UK, which doesn't mean that that much really. Other platforms drill it down a bit further. Uh, YouTube is, you could spend your whole day on YouTube analytics. There's a massive amount of them, which go way beyond just how many views you got and how many comments you got. Um, but it does show some really useful things to show, you know, how many views your channel gets over a period. And it's got this little click through race uh, funnel down at the bottom right hand side here, where it shows, you know, I've had 509 impressions, of which 16 people actually watch the video. So 16 divided by 509 is 1.77. So remember, so you know, two and a half percent is usually quite a good engagement rate. So for that one, that was quite low. F Facebook metrics, if you're using um, Facebook's pages. So although I don't have um, a business account, I do have what one of my Facebook profiles is optimized around um, my speaking engagement. And Facebook's got some useful metrics. Again, it's got all the standard stuff around um, engagements and likes and reactions, that kind of thing. But it gives a great breakdown, uh, slightly more granular on the geography. It actually goes down to town level. 
as to referring where people are, uh, and also age and gender. So just happens that this is a group um, page that I run, which actually isn't around um, consulting on technology. It's something completely different. So you may notice that actually the majority of my audience, um, two-thirds of it, over two-thirds, three-quarters, in fact, um, is female, is women. Uh, a lot of young women in there for that matter. But that actually, if you knew what that group was about, would not be surprising. So Facebook, some really useful metrics as well, which takes us on then to the algorithm and how the algorithm works to actually um, get your post to get in front of more people. And I always joke about the algorithm because people say, oh, does anyone know about how the algorithm in LinkedIn works or the social media algorithm? Actually, there's loads of algorithms. Obviously, each social media platform has its own algorithms, but each of the platforms have multiple algorithms. So I'm going to talk through um, the LinkedIn algorithms or so, some of them. And the first one it starts off with, when you post something, uh, the first thing it does is it does a content violation check. So if you post anything that is against the... Um, the rules, so you know, um, illegal comments, um, images, swearing, this kind of thing. Um, it checks automatically to see if your post uh, breaks any of the rules, and it actually does that. It's quite good. They, they say it's done in under three hundred milliseconds, so it's almost instant. So if you post something, it gets rejected straight away. You know, you've put something in that the algorithm thinks is a bit dodgy in some way. The next thing is that there's another algorithm that detects for what they call spammy behavior. So if you're constantly doing certain types of posts to certain people uh, and you're putting in loads of hashtags and loads of references to um, sites that are outside LinkedIn and you're constantly posting, posting at regular rates, LinkedIn will consider that to be spammy behavior. They don't like spammy behavior because it puts people off the platform. And so it will at least down rank your posting. So it won't appear in social media feeds. So it's important to note that, that when you're writing an article or making a post um, to make sure it doesn't appear spammy. And that there's a whole article at the end that I can share a link to that I can explain more about how to avoid that. Once you've got past the, you know, is it a content violation? Is it spammy? This is where it starts getting into um, LinkedIn users' neural networks to start working out uh, a kind of a ranking of just how good this post is likely to be. And a, a number of platforms do it this way, whereby they serve your post out to a subset of people. They see how well it performs on that. And if it performs well, they then serve it out to a larger subset of people and if it performs well on that, you serve it out to a larger set again. So t TikTok do this where they serve it out to something like 100 people initially. And if it goes really well and lots of people watch it, they serve it out and it grows and grows and grows. And so eventually you can literally get millions of views um, on a single post, which is incredible. Um, LinkedIn works a similar way, I believe, that um, they serve it out to a subset as like a kind of a test. Um, to work out the likelihood that people are going to find it interesting. And then if enough of them click on it and like it, this kind of thing, then it gets served out to more and more. But it's a, it's a little bit more sophisticated than just looking at, you know, how many people liked it or commented. What they actually do is they take a look at things like, are the people who are viewing, reading, and liking your articles, are they connected to you, first of all? So are you a connection or a follower? Um, do they tend to be active in their own right? So this is the interesting thing that um, if you like my video, or, or in, in LinkedIn's case, if you like my article, if you are also a prolific networking, lively, active, write lots of interesting content, LinkedIn seems to rank that like higher than if you're someone who just logs into LinkedIn once a year and, and clicks on a few things. So LinkedIn's got a whole range of things 
where it takes a look at the activity of the people who are viewing your article um, or your post to work out a, an overall ranking as to whether it will then be recommended to more people. So there's a whole range of things on that. And one of the things that um, LinkedIn used to do a lot of, they're doing slightly less of now, is around this whole concept of dwell time that I mentioned before. And this is where they're using the time you spend reading or the time you appear to be spending reading um, an article is an indication of how good an article it is. And so LinkedIn actually did a load of research on how long people spend on reading articles, images, videos, job posts, anniversaries, and that. And they worked out the threshold that if you don't meet that threshold, then it's ultimately a fairly boring post or fairly boring article or whatever. So you'll see things like job posts. It's a fairly low threshold. Like if you can't achieve that level of some engagement, it's not worth doing anyway. So the only people who seem to read job posts are those who are looking for jobs or recruiters because recruiters like to know that people are looking for jobs so that they can go out and um, harass them and offer them opportunities. Whereas if you're putting out things like images and videos, then it's more likely you're generating something that is of interest to a wider audience. So LinkedIn has said that did loads of stuff around dwell time. And then all of this then feeds in to where initially um, the article gets posted out, comes up with, I've got it as a content quality score, gets triggered, gets published out, and then you get you know, human editors like you, me, whatever, reading it, making comments, and then they've got their own people who take a look at some articles as well. And it then feeds in with comments from you know, likes and views and this kind of thing to constantly look at is the content that you're producing actually any good and worthy of staying on the platform being promoted. So as you can see, there's a whole range of actual algorithms when people talk about the LinkedIn algorithm. There's actually lots of them that you have to work your way through. But in summary, for those, that some of the things that are useful to be aware of is it's important if you post something and people respond to your comments, do respond to their comments within 12 hours because that shows that you're being active with them. Um, the post length, uh, some people talk about up to using the full 1920 characters. The research I've seen suggests somewhere between 12 and 16 characters. So a, a few paragraphs, basically. Uh, do engage with others. You find that LinkedIn kind of notices the people who are active on their platform and so actively promotes the active people. So do, do engage yourself with making comments on other people's posts and liking them there. There's a whole thing around hashtags. Um, the, the algorithms keep changing on how they use hashtags. The current vogue with LinkedIn at the moment is no more than three to five hashtags. Uh, any more than that starts looking spammy, and it means it's a bit too generalized. Um, there's some stats here from some research posting weekly. Uh, generates more followers and a faster growth rate. So that presumably means that the article is more interesting. And how you write the article is interesting as well. So if you write um, an article where you can put headings in, so it's actually split out in some way, that seems to attract more views. And I think it's simply if you make content more easily readable, then people will read it. And uh, that, that improves the popularity of them. Um, what else we got? Um, the content of posts can be important as well. So how-to posts perform a third better than other posts. So that's where I've changed some of my posts now uh, to instead of talk about um, experiences I've had with data and analytics or technology, but explaining how you can take advantage of these various things. And, kind of thing. and the other thing as well, video posts, they reckon at the moment uh, perform better. And I'll share an example of that um, at the end as to why that seems to be. Some things that hinder as well. So uh, as well as um, good things to do, there's bad things. Posting too often starts looking spammy. So uh, leave a day, ideally. So it's certainly not less than 18 hours between posts. Um, if you do post something and you make a mistake or you want to make a change, don't edit it within two hours. 
because LinkedIn think that you're trying to um, play the game with them in some way, and so that they downrank it. Don't be the first to comment on your own post. So you may see there's a story about how LinkedIn will downrank uh, an article if it's got a link to an external site on it. And so how people used to get around that was that they'd say, you know, link to actual article, link, comment below. And they'd be the first person to then comment on the article with the actual link. That actually gets you downranked quite often. So don't be the first to comment in your own post. There is a way around that um, posting links, which I've found to be quite effective and some people might be interested in hear, hearing later on. Don't use too many hashtags. I mentioned three to five ideally. Certainly over 10 starts looking spammy and it gets downranked. Um, if you post something with an image, that seems to benefit uh, the posting. I've tried it a couple of times where I've posted something which is just text and then I've put in a picture and definitely things with pictures and images um, gain more attention, which is why I now pretty much most of my posts, I use Canva um, and let link it in with Dali, which is an, an AI platform to create an image for me. Uh, and I post that. As so if some of my um, articles, the um, image looks a bit um, contextual or ethereal. It's because quite often I tell it to paint a picture about data using Van Gogh or Dali as a kind of thing. Posting on a company page seems to be quite an effective. Personal accounts work better. And views with no dwell time um, tend to get downranked. So be wary. If you're sharing a link to a post and you're saying to people, please comment on this or please like on it, um, you need to make the article sufficiently interesting that they actually read it before they comment on it. Or, or sorry, read it before they click the like, because if they just go into the post, click like, and then leave it, that actually downranks um, the article in some ways. Quick few things on, on the, the market, and this is where um, it would really depend on what you're trying to do, whether you're selling or video education. That It's a whole range of things that, with the time we have to say, I'm not going to go into these. But do remember, I've got this comment at the bottom about platform bleed over. So what you're finding is that you know YouTube, the leading video thing for education, but I'm seeing it being used for promoting services and facilities more and more. Likewise, Facebook is bleeding into the professional side of things with, with business advertising, this kind of thing. And you know the networking thing with like LinkedIn. LinkedIn's becoming more of a video-based platform than it was. Um, and we're going to see the same, I suspect, with Twitter pretty soon, where Twitter's going to be posting more long-form content. So you find that... Um, both the content and the structure changes with all these platforms over time and the audience changes as well. So whereas originally when Facebook first came out, it was all for youngsters. Now it's for the, uh, older people. Beginning to be the same with TikTok and that. So quickly, in, in terms of the, the actual market to the, the platforms that are out there, Facebook, without doubt, it's got the most users on it. Um, Facebook has also got the most active users because it doesn't matter how many people you've got registered if no one's using your account closely followed by youtube you youtube is now viewed as i think it's the second most used search engine so everyone now uses youtube to go and find things out so that's why i've got small presence about um do, doing things using youtube channels um the time spent as well is interesting the more social the platform is the more time pe people tend to spend on it and so, you know, YouTube, you know, the, the nature of it being video content means that, that that's the one to go for if you want to go engage with people who are just glued to the screen. LinkedIn doesn't even appear on here, you'll notice. Um, but when we look at, you know, the, the actual demographic type thing, this is where it becomes more useful because it may be that you, um, sorry, LinkedIn says here it's got 740 million users. I think they're actually claiming 900 now. Um, but it's more about whether that's the right 900 million people because it doesn't matter if Facebook's got 2.7 billion users if none of them want to buy your services. So it's important for you to figure out which platform your potential prospects and customers are, are going to be on and focus on that. As they sometimes say, you know, um, 
fish in the pools that have got the fish in them. When we take a look at um, profiles as well, sorry, so social media platforms, we can see that TikTok is t- continuing to grow at the moment, which is why I'm still trying to experiment with it. But LinkedIn, for business at least, uh, tends to still be the be- best for lead generation for, for business development. LinkedIn, remember as well, you know, its users, it might have 900 million users, uh, but they are spread around the world. So if your only interest is in um, potential clients in the UK, they say they've got 34 million UK um, people on their platform. So that's not a bad market to go for. Then remember as well, um, as well as all of these platforms, you've still got going live, but I don't mean in person. What I actually mean is that all the social media platforms have now got live capabilities. So as well as posting things, which are kind of static, you can actually run things like a LinkedIn Live, a Facebook Live, a TikTok Live, and so on. And this is another way of engaging with your potential audience. So finally, the managing it, because there's a lot, lots of things to cram in there, but how and when do you, do you actually do this? So as an experiment, so I tried this a few weeks ago that I went through this process that I timed myself of how long it took me to produce a script for a video, did some headline research about it, recorded the video, edited it, um, identified the relevant hashtags, and then published it to, what's that, six social media platforms. I don't know um, how long people think that would take or how long it did take, but what I did was I, I recorded it and I repurposed it all. So uh, I recorded the video, I published it on LinkedIn, um, put it out to Twitter, then put it out onto Instagram, put it out onto TikTok, put it out onto YouTube. So this is all the same video um, repurposed and and republished onto all of these platforms. And end-to-end, to produce a five-minute video, in fact, I think it was actually a, a three-minute video. Um, took me a few minutes to do the background research, get some screenshots, uh, five minutes to record it, because it's literally get your mobile phone and, and record it, uh, 15 minutes to edit it, side it up, clean it up, publish it, everything, total of 40 minutes. So that gave me a lot of um, kind of like a pres- presence and awareness and that. And then that ties in, I was saying about how I posted it to LinkedIn and to Twitter. And I, I had one of the comments about, you know, is it better to go onto LinkedIn or to Twitter? Well, actually, when you're repurposing stuff, when you post something on LinkedIn, you can actually, there's an option in post setting to say, post it out to Twitter automatically. That saves you some time. So quickly, um, la- last few minutes, just want to quickly share some secrets, things that I've learned. Uh, definitely that great content beats everything else. That, that, uh, makes it more interesting for people. Consistency helps. So, you know, don't post about latest developments in your favorite technology marketplace one day and then what your train journey somewhere was the next day and then how nice a meal was out with some friends the next day type thing. Because the algorithms have not got a clue what on earth uh, your specialism is. And that's why it's important to identify and stick to your niche. So in the insurance sector, you know, if your niche is claims handling or policy admin systems, um, then, you know, st- stick to that and make it as specific as you can and become the go-to expert for that particular area. Uh, remember also, post what's important for your audience, not what's important for you. And I, I see it a lot on social media platforms now of people kind of like sharing their heartfelt stories were for most people, they're doing that because they want to put it out there, not because people want to read it. So please, please do think about when you're posting things, it really is about what's, imp- what's going to be interesting for people reading it, not what's important for you to be posting it. Uh, another thing, early engagement, if you get people actively commenting, liking that kind of thing when you post something, that is true across all platforms as well. Uh, SEO, I said I'm not going to cover that, but I use tools like vidIQ and TubeBuddy. Remember, dwell time by all the platforms is considered a proxy for quality. So get people staying on your platform, which is why I said I'd keep some of these secrets until the end, because it encourages you to stick around. 
few LinkedIn specifics as well. Hashtag strategies, as mentioned earlier, they, they do keep changing. Um, and thinking more and more about what you write in the article and if you do a video with it, you have to make sure that the video actually contains the right words now as well. So the platforms are now doing search optimization on words. Do watch out for various trends on the platform. So LinkedIn is still pushing video. And for hashtags, you might want to use a, a tool to help you. I use Engage AI sometimes. Uh, just find out which are the trending hashtags and which are the popular ones. A uh, really important one as well is don't tag people in your article unless they're likely to engage. Um, I, I see it quite a lot where people post about something and they just include a massive long list of um, tags to people. That actually harms their post if those people don't respond. So LinkedIn's savvy enough to say you're spamming people, so don't do that. Um, and do cross-promote posts, but you know, do to actually make sure that you actually read them. So don't just click on like, do it to actually spend some time to make the dwell stats go up. Um, and do cross-promote each other's posts as well. And then one of the final things is when is the best time to post? And there are uh, statistics available around this. However, I post anything that's newsworthy straight away. And everything else I post straight away. Uh, I don't bother using a, you know, an optimized for my audience. I, I just keep pushing it out. Uh, maybe that's the wrong strategy, but it's the one that works for me. Final one on uh, video and LinkedIn. So that this particular web webinar that I'm running now, I did two similarish posts. I did one with a video, even though you may not have realized it was a video. And I did one as an event. And it's interesting that the video got nearly double the impressions, but the events seemed to draw more attention in terms of the overall interest in that. But the video itself was actually a static image that I turned into an MP4, so a media player video file, with an animated finger pressing. And that seems to have increased the number of um, in interest in it. So quick wrap up, six M's, why they're so important. Remember who you are and what it is that you're trying to promote. So the me, motivation, why are you using social media? Monetization for many is going to be why. So you know how you can actually generate revenue. Look at the metrics, look at the markets um, for you and for your business and managing when to do it. Repurpose as much as you can. I mentioned some resources um, in this paper. I've, I've, clicked, I've included a load of links to really good articles that are worth checking up on as well. So with that, in the last few minutes, any questions?